Greetings, Earthlings. My name is Zero Jake, and welcome back to Space Engineers, where in the last episode we created this lovely defense platform equipped with Gatling guns and assault cannons. And it, it's a good template that we can paste about in places that we want to defend that don't have turrets of their own. For now. Uh, meanwhile, today we're going to be building ourselves a small strike craft, an assault ship, something that's faster than our military escort and can pack quite a punch. Um, things that I want for this kind of uh, ship, I want twin-linked railguns on the front, or at the very least underslung, so that we can take out capital ships as a small ship. Or at the very least, take out key systems like engines and turrets and what have you. I've already got ourselves a list of components, and the general idea is that we want it to have some ion thrusters so it can maneuver in space, and then when we need to go combat speed we can use our hydrogen thrusters and go extremely fast, or rather accelerate extremely fast. And then whether or not we have the resources, we can put on a small shield emitter just so that we've got some additional ablative hit points and then probably some armor plating, maybe some heavy armor in certain spaces, if that makes sense. Um, but first things first, we're going to work on our important sections. Most importantly, we need to figure out where the hell we want the railguns. So let's go get ourselves a landing gear place this like so, like so, that was terrible. Okay good, right, you're stable, we're going to get some armor plating just as a frame of reference. Okay, so we've got ourselves the cockpit and the rail guns on the front, now we just need to figure out the cargo. So at the back of the cockpit is a large conveyor hatch. So if we go to control 2 we can get ourselves the cargo containers. We want it so the top of the cargo container is in line with the cockpit itself. Like so. So it extends downwards. Yeah, that fits the profile. A bit wider than it is slim, but we can deal with that. We probably want it to be back a bit. So we've got ourselves a conveyor junction down here, which means that we can instantly put down a connector. Okay. And we're going to want it so that any of our landing gear makes it so that we sit with that connector at the very bottom. Okay, um, in addition, because we're able to do so, we're going to put a conveyor frame just so that we can space this out a bit. Go out to control one, and then we can put ourselves, no, yes, we can get ourselves a reloadable rocket launcher, which requires a small steel tube to place down. Right, which way is which way is fire? Uh okay, we need to switch that around like so. There. I believe that's what uh the right way around. So at the moment, we currently have ourselves uh forward mounted railguns. We've then got on the side some rocket launchers. Which is pretty good. Sorry. It is 40 degrees outside, degrees Celsius, and I'm suffering from a cold, or at the very least the uh, the end stage of a cold, and sweat is entering my eyes and it's painful. <laughs> okay. So this allows us to have two sets of our primary weapons, although we'll add some of the Gatling cannons, Gatling cannons? No, Gatling guns and assault cannons on as well, but those are much easier to set up than these bulky things. Um, we've got ourselves large conveyor ports there, there and there, which means we can have a connector down here. Now all that we need to do is fill out the rest of the internals. 
So after about half an hour of tinkering, I've come up with this design. Uh, you can see the two hydrogen cells on the sides that have large hydrogen thrusters and large hydrogen tank. And then at the back, we've got a large reactor, because why would you go with small? Now, the only thing I need to do is weld this up. Okay, so that's all of the components welded, or at the very least the minimum required components. I've also added some thrusters uh, in the lateral positions. So we've got two small hydrogen thrusters on each axis, uh, two left, two right, two up, two down. We'll put some more in later, but this should allow us to actually fly with this thing, given that it's... Well, I, I don't know really. How much can a thruster produce? Okay, so we now have six hydrogen thrusters facing downwards. Of course, we can reset this once we've got our tanks full of hydrogen. Um, but that means that we should have enough in order to lift off, or at the very least hold current position. All that we need now is to fill this thing with uranium and hydrogen. And how are we going to do that when we're not connected to any connector? That's a very good question. I have an answer. It's O2 generators. We're going to want the fighter to be able to refuel in situ so we could like hop out of the fighter in the shadow of an asteroid, mine some ice, stick it in, give us a bit more power just so that we can get places faster without needing to rely on just the ion thrusters. Now you may be wondering, where are the ion thrusters? I don't know, I haven't gone there yet. So we're going to place down two of our hydrogen, th hydrogen generators over here and over here. And then, hmm, because we also have the hydrogen engine, right? Which can be used to generate power using hydrogen. And we kind of want that just in case we run out of fuel. Is there an easy way for me to connect this to the network? Yeah, I can place one here and one here. Okay, that's gyros. So we should be able to maneuver ourselves. Now the only thing we need to do is cut this off and see how long we last. The idea is we want to negotiate the ship over to this supply dock, or uh, this connector, so that we can refuel um, our tanks to maximum using our current hydrogen tanks, which I believe carry 5 million. Right. Parking released. Oh no, I can't release parking because this is damaged. Okay, we are now airborne. Okay. Uh, now, if we just do a quick flight... Uh, no, we can do a flight test after we're docked with the connector. Okay, that's us docking, and our hydrogen tanks are refueling. Excellent. So whilst we're waiting for that, let's have a look. So I believe at this point we should just place another couple of uh, hydrogen thrusters on the top here. Um, we're going to base our armor design around where the hydrogen thruster placements are, and then once we've got the armor design we can place in ion thrusters, modify the armor design so that it looks good, and then we should be good to go. Um, still have the ability to place some more guns. But yeah, this is this is getting on well. Okay, we have refueled to 100%. Actually, we haven't. Excuse me. Uh, hydrogen. Tank. Okay, these are both filled at 100%. There's probably an interior inventory which can't be filled for some reason. Uh, so we're going to undock. Let's get ourselves some distance. Okay. Right, so we are now flying around. Let's see what this thing can do. Okay, yeah, we are picking up speed. And we should just be able to slow down whilst aiming forward as well. Yes, yes. Um, 
All right, let's have a look. Lateral breaks are also pretty good, especially on the downward position. Yeah, I think we'll keep additional thrusters on the downward. I need to remember what these actual terms are. Uh, rolling and... well, rolling feels a bit sluggish, so we're going to want to add a couple more gyros, I think. But given that we've got two hydrogen thrusters, uh, sorry, two hydrogen tanks, we do actually have quite the amount of uh, flight time when it comes to using them. Right, now the fun bit. Re-entry into atmosphere. With which it seems like we can go quite fast without hurting ourselves. He says that now. If I destroy, if I destroy this within 10 seconds, I'm going to be real annoyed. Yeah, okay. We we go by the same rules as before. Don't break the ship whilst you're uh, not uh, whilst you're trying to build it. Okay, let's move over here. Okay, I'm going to create a uh, conveyor. Well, I'm going to create a connector at the bottom here so that we can continue our work. Okay, so just taking a, a quick moment to go through what I've done. Um, I'm only doing one side at the moment, because then once I've done one side, I can do the other. Um, so firstly, we've got ourselves a warfare reactor at the front. Well, it could just be a regular reactor, but might as well go with the warfare one. Um, this is simply so that if we run out of uranium and we can't access the back because of whatever design decisions I make, then we can just stick some uranium in the front, the conveyors work, everything works, and we can do something um, because I imagine that if our conveyor system is offline because we have no power even if we put ice into this it's not going to jumpstart anything so just having the ability to jumpstart it with a tiny bit of uranium is useful uh, we've then also got a camera which uh, when used will allow you to see from the perspective of just between the railguns at their edge it should help a bit with aiming if we're doing some precise firing. And then we've got some armor plating and ion thruster placement. And I'm just trying to make it so that it looks neat and doesn't look like a box. So you'll see a lot of corners, a lot of harsh edges like this one, and this, and this, because I want to try and make it look good. Uh, yeah, so that's basically the, the bottom bit up to the cargo container. We'll do the rear section by itself once we've got that done. The next thing I want to try and work on is the side here and the top. Okay, just a, uh, a, a quick update on our progress. We have uh, done some additional stuff. We've got this, uh, this entire line done from the nose of the ship all the way to the end. We've got the inner side of the ship. We're going to do the outer side once we've finished everything else. Um, and we're currently working on getting the top working. We've got ourselves two large ion thrusters at the back, which should provide enough thrust to at least slow us down enough without using our hydrogen thrusters if we're trying to do things carefully. We've got some additional ion thrusters down here, um, but most of the ion thrusters are going to be on the uh, on the nacelles, because that's where they're supposed to be. Uh, now we've already got three ion thrusters at the top. We've got a total of, I believe, five on the bottom. Um, so we kind of want to place two ion thrusters here, but this large area is ever so slightly small, well, it's large enough that we should be able to fit something in here that can do something. Um, but it's too small to fit another reactor. I mean, we could place another hydrogen engine. If we go grab another one of those. We could place another hydrogen engine like this, or like this. Um, armor plate over the top, probably place another hydrogen thruster on there to match what we've done on the cargo container. 
Yeah, that looks about right. I don't think there's anything else with that kind of footprint that we don't need. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so we have most of the chassis completed. Uh, I've added a antenna over here and a beacon over here, just so that if one of them goes down, we still have the other. Um, antenna so that we can interact with stuff and beacon so that we can have ships jump to the beacon directly. Um, so we can use that as a mayday beacon if we need a rescue or something like that. Um, but just so that if we have this thing in the field, we don't lose it. Yeah, that's that's kind of the way that we're going here. Um, I'm pretty happy with how this is turning out. We've got some thrusters that need uh, welding up. We've got these thrusters at the back that <laughs> definitely need welding up. And the last thing that we need to do is we need to work on these nacelles. Right, so working on the nacelles, we do have places to place lateral ion thrusters everywhere if we so desire. Uh, we are going to need more hydrogen thrusters, well, more ion thrusters facing uh, towards the front. But the main idea is that this thing is a shield. So like a, a shield that goes up like this, goes inwards a bit, but mainly is there to cut off fire from the sides from hitting the hydrogen thrusters. Um, and then at the bottom we also want to add a landing gear. And I kind of want them to be equal in terms of the amount of distance they're going. We've got a design for the nacelle, or at the very least the armoring of the nacelle from the side view. Uh, we are obviously going to be reiterating, or rather iterating, on this design in the, in, in the coming episodes when we use it, find flaws in the design, reuse it, add more bits onto it. Um, but this, this wing design uh, will work for now. We've got some additional ion thrusters, about seven, which will give us a total of 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 20 ion thrusters facing forwards which should counteract the two large ion thrusters facing backwards in terms of the amount of thrust and energy it uses. We've got a large reactor, so it's not really that much of a problem. Uh, we've also got four additional side thrusters, giving us a total of seven. We could probably put two more over here and make that 11. Um, and then we just need to work on adding some thrusters on the top since we've only got three at the moment. Right, here we go. This is the near finished article. Um, oh, of course I've forgotten to weld the reactor in place, whatever. Uh, we've got ion thrusters out the wazoo. We've got hydrogen thrusters out the wazoo. We have a large reactor. We've got two hydrogen tanks, which are near full of hydrogen. We got landing gears. We got rail guns and missiles. Now, the only thing we don't have is Gatling guns and I'm gonna set those up uh, eventually. Not now, though. We've got railguns, we've got missiles. If we need to go and take something out immediately, we can do so. Um, but we've got a conveyor port here and on the other side so that we can place our Gatlings. We might change out these thrusters for weapons instead. Might be better. Um, yeah, and it's, it's pretty good. If we unpark, you can see that we've got plenty of thrust in all vectors which means that this thing is a highly controllable vessel. Now the only thing we need to check, um, which we're going to check now, is if we go get from our various groups, obviously we're going to need this one to toggle on and off. Uh, toggle those off, we don't need it. Um, we're going to want to check to see if our hydrogen thrusters can, well, to see if our ion thrusters can support us in atmosphere. So we got hydrogen off and on, ion thrusters off and on. So we can turn off our ion thrusters and be purely on hydrogen power. We won't be as powerful, but we won't be wasting any of our fuel. Well, our uranium anyway. Um, and then we can turn off our hydrogen thrusters. And we just have enough thrust in order to stay up in the atmosphere until we start moving around. Uh, if we focus upwards, I'm sure that we can get some amount of stability, but uh, yeah, we use the ion thrusters when not inside the atmosphere. If we're trying... atmosphere? 
gravity well. Um, if we're trying to go down to the lunar surface, we'll need to make sure we have some hydrogen. So let's turn those back on and have that work again. Um, but yeah, it, it, it pulls a pretty good turning circle. Now, in the next episode, we're going to try and see if we can't take out some pirates. I want to take this for a weapons test and see what kind of things we can do with it and also do some NPC contracts. But until then, my name has been Zero Jake. End transmission. <laughs>